What painting the old masters is teaching me? Today I picked Mary Cassatt because she's one of my favorites. Let's get started. And if you would, please consider giving me a thumbs up and subscribe. That would be really helpful to me. Uh, and then we'll get back to the, our recaps of Portrait Artist of the Year. So here's the painting that I'm going to work on. Now I just took a portion of the painting, not the whole painting. And that's because I like to work in a square. So I edit it to be a square shape because that's my favorite shape to work in. I've always loved this painting. You know, there's something just so innocent about this darling little girl. And I knew it was going to involve opposites. I knew it was going to involve yellows and violets playing off each other. So that was going to be fun. So now the painting starts. Now I know for many artists who have gone to art school that painting the old masters is part of the curriculum. I don't know if it still is or not, but it interests me quite a bit. And I do have a friend who paints for the uh, National Portrait Gallery, so um, which she does as a very serious endeavor. So I've been really curious about how, how and why this could improve your painting. And I was going to keep my usual value chart going. I make these color dabs. I make dark dabs. That's what I'm putting in first. I put in my darkest darks. And then what I'm putting in here is Naples yellow, which is going to be my placeholder for my lightest lights. I don't use any uh, masking fluid or white out because I don't like the, um, the kind of scars that it leaves behind. And that's just because I'm not very adept at using it. And also, I like to use really broad strokes working with, uh, I always, almost always work with a flat brush, which I am in this case. And, um, and I'm working on an 8x8 eight eight piece of Arsh uh, cold press paper. Cold press has some tooth to it and absorbs the paint. Uh, wet pr press, for me, uh, the paint just slides right off. I can't handle it at all. So what I'm doing, I call, I call myself a color shape painter because I don't look at, at eyes and nose and mouth or anything like that. I just look at shapes. I just look at dark shapes, medium shapes, and light shapes. And so I've got in my darkest darks. I've left my lightest lights. Now I have all the mid-tones co to consider. Now what happens for me in the mid-tones is I have to think in terms of cool and warm. So on the side of the face where there's a little bit of shadow, I've got to cool things down. So if I've mixed up like an orangish kind of pigment, I got to tone it down with a little bit of blue. And likewise, um, the same thing. And if I'm going to the lighter side of the face, I'm going to uh, put a little warmth into it and add a little bit of orange. So I'm always kind of, I call it dialing in as if you're cracking a code on a, uh, on a safe. You got to turn the dial until you get the value that you want. It's, it's three things I keep in mind. Color is important and value, how light or dark something is, and then temperature, how cool or warm something is. And then they all have to relate to each other. I think that's the challenge of the whole thing. That's what makes it such a jigsaw puzzle. And um, because I'm, I'm not what I call a matchy-matchy painter. I'm, I don't want to match. I never want to match to a photograph, even if it's a, if it's a photograph of painting. I want to bring my own palette and my own choices to my interpretation of that painting. So, so I am going to look at what Mary did and look at whether the tone was warm or cool, but I'm going to decide for myself how I want to tip that color, how I want to move the dial. And I do that for the most part by mixing neutrals. And, and neutralizing means, see, now the background you see was too pink. It needed to be tamped down, but it was actually an orange. And so you tamp it down with a, a layer of, uh, a, a thin layer of cerulean blue over. And that gave me exactly the neutral that I wanted. So I was actually kind of pleased with how this painting turned out. I didn't want it to be fussy. I wanted it to be simple. And, and kind of channel a little bit of, of the artist. And, and I do feel like the artist, the original artist, I mean, the artist and I are having a little bit of a conversation when I do these. And so um, I'm not sure which artist I'm gonna pick next. I'm avoiding Van Gogh like the plague because I don't think I can get into his brain, but it was very enjoyable to be in her brain today. And so, um, so I think I'm gonna to continue to learn this way. Learn, I'm calling it learning by the, from the old masters. And, and it really is a delight. 
So, and I think it's going to make me a better portrait painter and I hope a better um, observer when it comes to my recaps of Portrait Artist of the Year. So remember to keep the white to your paper white, your paints wet, mask for value, mix for color. And please remember, this is a watercolor. I, I call myself the watercolor coach. I don't know how to paint in anything but watercolor, but I tend to use what they call oil painting or acrylic painting techniques. All right, see you next time. Bye-bye.